Hi, Liz. Hi, Jack. How are I you today? I'm, I'm well, thanks. Thanks for talking to me today. What is your favorite band making music right now? Oh, my favorite band is the Avet Brothers. Have nice. you heard them? They're yes, folk. the Third They're Gleam, folk. that new album they just came out with. Yes, I love that a lot. So good. Um, yep, soulful. Um, yes. Um, all right. So during quarantine back in April, uh, I remember watching a YouTube live stream of Andrew Scott performing Seawall by Simon Stevens, and I was absolutely moved. I remember reflecting on how lucky I was in like an almost twisted way to have this opportunity to see an artistic hero of mine perform so intimately and exquisitely, something I likely never would have been able to if not for the pandemic. Can you recall any similarly poignant moments of artistic COVID silver linings this year? If so, what were they? And that's a great question because, I mean, I think we've all thought a lot about how the arts industry has been sort of devastated by this, right? Broadway's dark and museums had to close and, and artists are out of work. Um, but but there, ha there, has, there have been some wonderful silver linings. And I think artists have, have in many ways sort of traded the excitement of, of that liveness to, to a kind of intimacy that they you know, by either perform, we see them performing in their small apartments in Manhattan or in an atypical place. You know, I've also really loved seeing the, um, the plays that the National Theater in London has been streaming. It's been, just been wonderful. Things I would never have gotten to see either. Exactly. In a twisted yeah. way, like I said, it's almost kind of nice. Um, yeah, definitely to, silver lining. Yeah, exactly. It's important to keep in mind the silver linings, I think. Interested to hear about like what you have struggled with personally because I know like some people a lot of people I think in our college and across the university see you as like oh it's the dean like mm -hmm. dean Liz can't have anything going on um but I think you probably do so uh could you give me just like one example of um a personal obstacle you've had to overcome during this uh absolutely unprecedented year yeah absolutely I mean so you know Jack I'm a theater person like you are and I and I think everybody misses people right but but I, I, I mean, theater people get their energy from being with other people. And, and, we, and I am so fortunate at Miami to have a great team. I mean, I, the associate dean, they said the whole dean staff, all the department chairs, I just, I love them. I love seeing them. And so even though I see them on the screen, it is really hard to not be in a material room with them. And that is, I mean, and I, I know I speak to something that everybody is feeling, but it's, it is, it's very isolating. It's been very difficult for me. And, um, and personally, I also really miss my kids. I'm a proud Miami mom. And um, I've been fortunate in having my adult children right here in Oxford during their college years. And they are staying away right now to um, keep my husband and I safe. So I miss them. I miss, yeah. them. I miss I my that. students too. Yeah, I, I can <laughs> Yeah. Them, I guess. And it's gonna be all it's a whole it's a whole lot of mask wearing and a whole lot of not hugging my parents so right. we're all in the same boat i think these days yeah. but i think i don't want to take up too much of your time uh so we'll move to our last question and careful it's a pretty hard hitter uh as a proud graduate of the university of vermont who do you think would win in a fight rally the catamount or swoop the red hawk Ooh. well when i was in at uvm in the 80s uh uh it was a kind of mecca for bohemians and and ski bums and so it was a um it was a pretty sort of chill place so i definitely think the catamount i knew and loved would choose um to make love not war mm. and so swoop as a bird of prey despite his cartoonish appearance would probably win. He's a real killer, that one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, well, Liz, <laughs> thank you so much for doing this interview. 